Hi, today on Draw It and Know It, we are going to draw a baby chimp. This is Dan Letha for Reasons for Hope, and let's get going. All right, we're going to draw a baby chimp today, and today is not an art lesson so much as I wanted to show you how I draw myself. Well, not myself, I'm drawing a baby chimp here, but how I draw, usually for the lessons, the art lessons, and the other the other drawings that I've done for this feature, they're more thought out, they're more practiced, they're more, um, each line is kind of pre-packaged so that it's easy to present. And uh, I wanted to give you more of a true flavor of how I draw. So I, I do some of the things that I've shown you in the videos where I use my pencil lines and I start constructing sort of a skeleton and stuff, but sometimes my lines aren't so precise and exact. And uh, sometimes they're a little more sketchy and then I make mistakes and I have to fix things or I don't use the exact line that I did in my pencil sketch for inking later on. So there's lots of adjustment. There's lots of um, kind of getting the feel for things. Now I'm, I'm actually looking at some reference right now that you can't see on the screen either. So this isn't just coming out of my head, just out of my imagination. Most cartoon drawings are uh, are based on reality so they're they're recognizable things and the artist is interpreting it as a uh, as a cartoon but the the pieces and parts of the figure that they're drawing or whatever it is that they're drawing are usually uh, based on something very real and so in this case i'm drawing a chimpanzee i wanted my cartoon to be uh, somewhat accurate even though it's a cartoon version of a chimp and so I've got a, a photograph of a chimpanzee that I'm looking at right now. So I've sketched it in, and again, it's been kind of sketchy. And oh, by the way, one other thing that you need to know is that this drawing is sped up four times. And so I don't draw this fast, um, but I am drawing at a fairly good clip, even though um, what you're seeing here is tons faster than what I drew it at. So here I'm inking it now, and I'm, like I said, I'm following some of my ink lines and some of the lines I'm kind of making up as I go based on the, the general direction of, of the pencil lines underneath. All right, so, but I'm drawing a chimpanzee, and I wanted to kind of talk to you about chimp, chimp, chimpanzees a little bit. Um, whenever we hear a, a TV special talk about chimpanzees, even children's specials, they tend to say, you know, that they've, you know, evolved from creatures millions of years ago and they're man's closest relative. We always hear that, man's closest relative, you know, and so we're supposed to look at these things like they're our cousin or something like that, which they're not. Biblically, um, chimpanzees were created uh, before people, so I guess evolution and the Bible agree in that re respect, but um, there's some very key differences, and chimpanzees or the ape-like creatures that we were supposed to evolve from um, did not e eventually gradually turn into people. Um, apes have some very distinct features that are different from humans, or you could say humans have very distinct features that are different from apes. Um, we're always trained so much by these television shows or, or whatever educational resource we're looking at to look at the similarities between a chimpanzee or a, an ape or, or whatever it is, some animal, to humans. And so they wanna, they wanna give, get us thinking in that direction that this is a close relative, that uh, we're, we're closely related to each other on the evolutionary tree. And so, you know, look at the, 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 they have two eyes and a nose and a mouth and they make facial expressions and they have hands and they've, you know, they got a body structure that's similar to us and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> but there's a lot of differences here. Um, if you listen to people that talk about anatomy, like uh, my friend Dr. David Menton, who works for Answers in Genesis, he does a whole talk on the differences between apes and humans. And if you look at an ape skull and a human skull, the apes don't have the bone on the nose that the, that the humans do, so that if you put a pair of glasses on an ape skull or an ape face, those pair of glasses are going to fall right off because there's nothing to rest on. And so if you look at skulls that people say evolved, you know, those are our evolutionary ancestors, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between an ape skull and a human skull. Just from that fact alone, the, the slope of the face, if you see the skull in profile, they're very different. And so even if you look at ape hands, 
to say, well, they have thumbs and fingers. Well, it's true, but if you look at them, you know, that's your homework assignment here. Find some pictures of ape hands and look at the differences between them and human hands. They're very, very different. And then look at the feet, very different. We don't have hands on our feet, but apes do. And uh, if you look at the pictures of um, our so-called so ape-like um, ancestors in evolutionary books and, and that sort of thing, they seem to take the feet and evolve them into human feet pretty quickly because they want them walking as soon as they can. So it's stuff like that that, again, we're educated to kind of look at all the, the similarities between apes and humans, but there's a lot of, lot of differences too that are very, very important. And you know, there's, there's one key difference <clears throat> in the, um, between the ape family and the human family. And it's not something that you can look at our outside appearance and, and catch the difference so much. It's not something that you can take a look at an x-ray or examine the inner workings of uh, the apes versus humans um, to find that difference. The place that you'll find that difference is somewhere that is very, very important that we recognize as an authority, someone that really knows what they're talking about. Not just the scientist with a degree, not just the human that makes mistakes and has errors, but the God who made us, the God that created us. And if you look in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, there's a very, very special verse that tells us the difference between apes or whatever animal you want to talk about and humans. So Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. So look at this word man. So God created man. He didn't say this type of statement about in his own image about any other creature but humans. Humans are the only thing on this earth, living, breathing um, creatures on this earth that have that quality of God, that image of God in them. And so we are very different. We are very special. We can have certain similarities, similarities between uh, some creature in the animal kingdom, but that's because we have a common designer. That, that similarity should speak of that we have a, an artist that made both of us. But that artist gave us a part of his signature, if you want to say, that, say it that way. He gave us something special versus the animals. And um, when Jesus came to earth as a human, he didn't come as an ape that turned into a human, or he didn't come as some animal. He came as a human. And so again, that's very, very special and very, very unique. So the next time you hear that apes are the same as humans or we're very similar or whatever it is, or they're trying to get you to look at the similarities between apes and humans, remember this one key difference that separates us from all the animals. And that's that God made us in his own image. And we thank you, Lord, for making us very, very special.